Hi, it's Kathy from Inking It Up with Kathy, and I'm here with the fifth part of my Forever Fern class uh, offering. And in this one, I wanted to show that you don't have to just work with green to have a really effective looking card. So this is the card we're going to make. Um, for the supplies that you need, this is a five and a half inch by eight and a half inch piece of Blushing Bride. And it is um, uh, folded in half to create the card base. Sorry about that, I drew a blank. Um, this piece is Rococo Rose and it measures um, three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And I, um, this is just a tip for cardstock saving. I actually needed die cut out of it um, for here in the front. So I just cut it out of the center because it will be hidden behind the vanilla. So I went ahead and just um, cut that out of that. So let's just go ahead and remove that real quickly. Quasi quickly. Okay. So take those little pieces out of there. So we've got that die cut piece there now. And then um, for the front is a piece of very vanilla that measures three and three quarters by five. Actually, that's this one here. And then this is for the inside of the card and it's very vanilla and it measures uh, four inches by five and a quarter. I've got a piece of uh, cherry cobbler um, that all you need is a half inch by four inches. It looks like this is a little bit larger. It's just this was probably a scrap that I had at this size. And then a piece of very vanilla that measures three quarters by four as well for here. And then you'll need a piece of um, very vanilla that um, you, you'll be doing your stamping and die cutting from. And then a piece of very vanilla that um, measures uh, three and a half inches by um, a half inch for the sentiment here. You'll be die cutting uh, this die shape, and here it is in the die, out of some vellum. So you'll need that cut as well. And then on the In Good Taste embellishments, you'll need this little piece here and three of the little ones. This one I actually have the little, I believe those are octagons. This one I have the little um, X's. So um, either one. This is a bow tied with the gold uh, twine from the Forever Greenery uh, ribbon combo pack. And then a piece of the twine that measures about four inches. For inks, you'll need Blushing Bride, Sahara Sand, Cherry Cobbler, and Rococo Rose. And finally, you'll need one of the aqua brushes um, to do your watercolor wash. So let's do that first so that we can set that aside to dry while we're doing everything else. Okay, so I got to get the right piece. So that would be this one here. Now, when you're working with um, doing watercolor on either the very vanilla or the um, the the whisper white, it's going to buckle. Um, so the best thing that you can do to help is uh, use some washi tape and use one that's not very tacky at all, and just kind of uh, tape it down. And then it won't um, it won't buckle so much. the The tape will help hold it from buckling. So I'm going to go ahead and tape all four sides. 
This is a, a great thing to do with your old washi tape that's retired that you don't um, have the colors for anymore or just one that you're not a real fan of. Okay, so for the watercolor wash, I'm going to be using the Rococo Rose ink. And I've got some in my base. But the first thing I want to do, and you're going to need to do this relatively quickly, is you want to do lay down some water onto your cardstock first. The problem is, is very vanilla and Whisper White do absorb it quickly. The Shimmer White um, works better for watercolor, but the coloring isn't right for us. So I'm going to do this relatively quickly. I'm going to get some water. There we go like that and then pick up my color and come back in. And do my wash. Okay. And if you don't like an area or you want a little bit more color, you can come back and um, put a little more color in. Just like that. Now here's another helpful hint for you. Cleaning, um, we've always learned to clean our brushes on paper and just kind of over and over and over again. Uh, use your chamois. The chamois actually um, absorbs the water better than a piece of paper does. And it cleans really quick and easy. Just like that. And it's all clean. So that's a tip for you, is using your chamois to clean your aqua brushes. All right, so while that's kind of sitting there drying, I'm going to move some things out of the way so we can work over here. I should have set that off to the side, shouldn't I? Um, we're going to do some stamping on this piece here. And with our Blushing Bride, we're going to take this one here, and I need two of those. So I'll stamp two of those. And I don't know why my blushing bride always looks so odd and when it first comes out. It just always looks like the wrong color, but as it dries, it, it, it comes around. Okay, and then for the Sahara Sand, I want these two little ones. So we'll get them over here. Whoops, he's off the end. We can't do that. So let's put him up here. Plus that wasn't a very good stamping anyway. And then finally, out of Cherry Cobbler, we're going to do the berries. And we just need one of those. All right, so those that's the stamping, and we'll be die cutting those out. But let's go ahead while we've got our stamps available. We're going to do this piece here. And I've got a piece of Whisper White, not Whisper White, just of um, some copy paper to put down here so that as I stamp um, off the edge, like this, and there, and then one right there, and then we'll come in, back in with our Blushing Bride, and one there. Okay, so we'll set that to the side. Oh, and then we've got to do our You Can Do This, huh? So find our half inch strip and our sentiment. And center it just like that. 
Well, that's kind of going downward. Let's try that again. There we go. That's better. All right. So we'll let that continue to dry while we um, do some die cutting here. And again, my apologies for um, my electronic cutter sounds. I don't have the new Stampin' Up! one yet. It's on my list. So I'll continue to work with this one until I get it. So I'm going to go ahead and just put those with the washi tape. Obviously that one really moved. There we go. Okay, we've got that one cut, and those two cut. So we just need this little guy down here. And this one here. together. And that's looking getting close to dry. We'll go ahead and lift it off. And I'll turn it so that the back side can kind of get some air. Move it out of the way for now. All right. So we can build our floral spray. So I'll get uh, some glue dots. And place this one here. And one on here as we start to attach to this piece here. Whoops. So based upon that, we'll put those on the front because they're going behind that. But these ones we'll place on the back. I'm just putting them at the base of each of them. Just like that. Okay. So this one will go up here. So we'll attach that about right there. And this one will go in there like that. Place that there. Um, our vellum piece, where did you go? Some. Um, glue dot on him. And he'll go right here in front. And then the cherry cobbler one. And I'm just kind of working them down now, down to this stem. 
and I'm lining them all up in the stem area here. Move this up. Just like that. Okay. And then this piece here, um, we'll go ahead and liquid glue. And it's going to go on there right like that as well. Now I'm going to, oh, he's not. I'm going to go ahead and trim off a little bit of this base. Like that, a little, you know, I'll just go to the bottom of the, the um, Sahara sand pieces. Easy for me to say, huh? Okay. And then I'm going to take this little piece of twine, take some liquid glue, and I'm going to go up from the top of this and go down straight in a line like that. And I'm going to set that on there um, in reverse. Just like that. And I'm going to let that dry on there. Come on, cooperate. This doesn't want to stay there. My fingers got glue. Ugh, it's not wanting to stay. Okay, let's go about this a different way. Let's use a glue dot. And uh, let me use my tweezers. The liquid glue worked on the other one. Alright, and you're going to go on there. And then that's going to get pressed onto there like that. Okay. We'll set that to the side just to let that liquid glue um, dry. On the you can do this, um, we can get our banner, the tr triple banner, punch and put that in there. And I don't want it way back here where the words are. I actually want quite a bit of a banner at the end. So I'm just gonna have just a tiny bit punched off on either side. Just make sure you're centered and have about the same amount punching off of each side. There we go. If you don't have a punch, you can always just um, use your, um, your scissors and snip them. Okay, and then we're going to get the Rococo Rose ink out again. And I'm just going to take a sponge and lightly sponge the outside edge. Okay, so how is our card doing? It's getting close to dry. There's still a little bit on there. So let's uh, take a look at the inside and um, we can go ahead and assemble it. Let's just do that. Um, so the I'm here if you need me stamp is in Cherry Cobbler. I love this sentiment with the you can do this and then I'm here if you need me. Uh, for anybody go undergoing, you know, cancer treatment or um, other sorts of challenges. 
And I think I want to soften this a little bit. And how I'm going to do that is with that um, sponge and the Rococo Rose. And um, let me bring back that paper. And I'm just going to have just a little bit. And along the base here, I'm going to just put a little bit of color just to soften that just a little bit. Okay, get my adhesive. Let's see which is the top up here. And that will go along here. You ever have these days where nothing goes on straight? Yep, that would be today. Goodness gracious. Mm. And on there. That goes there. Go on the inside of my card. The outside of the card, we'll get our matting and this piece here. And I'm going to decide which way I want it. I think I want it this way. If you do have a little bit of buckling, um, use your adhesive to um, really secure that down and you'll lose some of that. Come on. All right. So we'll put that down on there like that. And then put that down on the card. So let's go back to this guy. So we've got this on here. We're going to take this and start to wrap it. And I'm going to hold it here at the base of this wood piece. And I'm going to wrap it a couple of times. And then I'm going to start to come down. My apologies, that's my husband's phone going off and I'm going to wrap to the bottom of it. Once I get to the bottom in the back like that, I'm going to take another glue dot and fold it over in half and place it on the back right here and then have that ribbon that twine go up into it there like that and then this leftover off the end I'm going to just snip it so now it looks like that ribbon goes right down to the bottom okay and then finally uh, using a little bit of uh, liquid glue. Let's hope this one works. I 
at the top, we'll place our bow right there at this top of that wrap. Just like that. Now this whole thing is going to um, get attached with some dimensionals. So I'll place dimensionals at various locations. And it'll go up here like this. And then the you can do this get my mini dimensionals which have grabbed on to my tape. Okay, and I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to round out the banner that way and then I'm going to round it this way, round it that way, round it this way and then again tip down at the end. So it goes up and down just like that. And to make it stay like that on your card you're going to turn it over and put a double stack of mini dimensionals in here. And we'll do the same at these ends. This way when you mail the card, if you do mail it, it won't mash and then the banner won't be up and down. And then for these spots here, you can do either liquid glue or glue dots. We'll go ahead and do some liquid glue there and there. Okay, so make sure that those are taken off of those. And this will go down here like this. and those dimensionals will hold those portions up and then the glue will glue those two down. And then finally we have our three little um, octagon pieces that uh, liquid glue. So I'm going to put one here and I think one over here and then one down here. And there we go. There is the other, the fifth in my series for the Forever Fern class. Hope you enjoyed watching that card as well.